The Air Force Civil Engineer Support Agency has developed the following video to support the Air Force Qualification Training Program. This video covers step-by-step -step procedures for a specific task identified in the specialty training standard of the Career Field Education and Training Plan. This video does not take the place of on-the-job training. It is not intended to replace the applicable technical reference. However, this program is intended to enhance the on-the-job training process, standardize the training procedures, provide just-in-time training, and provide the minimum knowledge on a task or piece of equipment when a unit does not have the equipment. We hope you'll find this video a valuable training tool. The rubber-tired front-end loader is a versatile piece of equipment for civil engineers. Throughout your career, you will be using this piece of equipment for a variety of tasks. Installing a forklift attachment further increases the number of possible applications. The forklift can be attached via a quick coupling system or it can be permanently attached. Each front end loader manufacturer and forklift attachment manufacturer rates their lifting capability differently. Refer back to the manufacturer's operator's instruction to verify the lifting capacity before ever trying to lift a load. A front end loader equipped with a forklift attachment is generally regarded as a forklift. Subsequently, this piece of equipment will be referred to as a forklift. This program will address how to load and unload material as well as the transporting of material placed on the forks. The scenario you find yourself in is a holding area where a tractor trailer has just arrived loaded with material. You must unload, transport, and place the material in a storage location. After removing the load tie downs, position the forklift in front of the item to be unloaded. The fork should be on or near the ground. Check the item to be unloaded to determine the maximum fork width setting for best stability. This may be the width between the pallet openings, the dunnage placement, or specially made fork openings on some equipment. Adjust the forks as necessary. The wider, the better. Guiding the forks under a load is usually a two-person operation because the forklift operator cannot always see the tips of the forks. Therefore, a spotter should assist in both loading and unloading operations. Don't forget to coordinate the hand signals. It's often noisy around the equipment and hard to hear. Thoroughly understood hand signals create a much safer working environment. Raise the forks until the tips are even with the opening under the load. The fork should be level or slightly tilted downward. Very slowly move the forklift forward until the tips of the forks are right at the opening under the load. As directed by the spotter, adjust the height or angle of the forks until they are centered under the load. Continue to move forward sliding the forks under the load. Watch the spotter and adjust the forks as needed. When the back of the forks touches the load, stop. Your fork should be fully under the load if the load configuration permits. In this case, the forks reached partially under the load on the other side of the trailer. Simply back the forklift up until the forks are under only the item you wish to remove. Tilt the forks back slightly. Raise the load very slowly to check the balance on the forks. The load should only be lifted high enough to clear the bed of the trailer when you back up. Check behind you and place the front end loader in reverse. Back up slowly and only far enough away to clear the side of the trailer. A foot or two of separation is usually sufficient. Since the forks are not completely under the load, lower the load to the ground and reposition the forks. 
Ideally, the load should be in contact with the forks in two places, on one side and the bottom. Now is also a good time to check the stability of the load. If necessary, secure the load to assure that it will not shift or fall during transport. You are now ready to transport the material. Keep the load close to the ground. How close is close? At most job sites, 12 to 18 inches will clear most obstacles on the ground. If you can get it closer to the ground, by all means do so. The closer, the better. You'll do less damage if the items happen to shift and fall off the forks. Continue backing away from the trailer until you can turn the forklift and travel to the storage location. Transporting material with the forklift is a little more complicated than simply placing it in forward and heading off. There are a number of things you need to be aware of. Will I need a spotter to walk in front of or beside the load to act as a guide? The spotter should walk close enough to watch the load, but remain far enough away to keep from being injured should the load accidentally fall. Keep the load as close to the ground as possible without danger of hitting anything. Take your time and go slow. Traveling at too high a speed will get you into trouble sooner or later. And by all means, avoid sharp turns and sudden stops. Try to be as smooth an operator as possible. In the holding area, you are directed where to place the load. Whenever possible, make sure the ground is level and dry. Guided by the spotter, move the load forward until it is in position. Slowly lower the load until it comes in contact with the ground. Gradually lower the forks until they are centered in the opening under the load. Very slowly back the forklift away from the load. If the load acts like it wants to tip back, then the front of the forks may not be tilted down enough to clear the underside of the load. Watch the spotter closely until you receive the signal that you are clear of the material and ready to go after the second load. Not every load will be the same size, shape, and or weight. Each load should be evaluated for stability prior to movement. Wide loads require close attention. Make sure it will safely fit through any gates or narrow passageways that must be used during the transport process. Again, a spotter will be helpful to direct the forklift operator through any tight spots. This particular load was received on dunnage. In the holding area, you should again use dunnage or a pallet to support the load during placement. This will facilitate the handling process when the material needs to be relocated. Position the load in front of the storage location. If a pallet is to be used, the spotter can center it under the awaiting load. Lower the load until it comes in contact with the pallet. Tilt the forks forward until they are level and clear the material. Back the forklift until the spotter indicates you have cleared the load. Congratulations! Another load safely moved and accurately placed with the forklift. <laughs> Unloading, transporting, and loading material with a forklift is a simple matter of adapting the steps just described to your particular situation. Most operators get in trouble when they don't follow the basic procedures, don't watch their spotters, and try and get in too much of a hurry. How proficient are you going to be?
This program was produced for Headquarters, Air Force Civil Engineer Support Agency, Operations Support Directorate, Training Division. We gratefully acknowledge the 96th Civil Engineer Group, Horizontal Repair Section, Eglin Air Force Base, Florida, for their support in producing this program.